You're listening to Never Heard of It, a Night Shift Radio production. Yeah. It felt kind of weak, but I can see the, the spike on, on the waveform, so I think it's all right. Yeah. So for those of you listening, uh, we, we talk about that. We always start by when we, I, I would say we always, but we have frequently started talking about our immaculate claps that we have. Um, <laughs> and uh, the reasoning is, is when you record remotely and each person is recording their track separately, you do a clap and it's just a, it's a way to like sync up the audio. So that way, when, because there's a delay on any, uh, service that we're using, um, between what, what Caleb hears, what I hear and versus what is being recorded. So you do the claps you sync up the claps and then all the audio is synced up uh therein so now you've learned a lesson uh for more tips like this visit nightshiftradio.com and don't forget to subscribe on our youtube channel <laughs> excellent i was gonna say excellent and exactly mm-hmm. at the same time and it came out as exalact exalact exalaxative uh, sounds like a laxative um, it is. but the immaculate claps sounds like uh, a dope r&b band <laughs> Yeah. See, I would, I would think like, uh, um, like Brit pop, like Brit pop, uh, think like the killers or like, I don't know, Arctic monkeys or something like that. That's what I would think. I, I guess. Hello. I love we all the immaculate claps. <laughs> and this song is called down with the patriarchy. What? Everybody the- hates the man. I don't know. I'm done. All right. That sounded like the B-52s for some reason. It sounded like the B-52s trying to do Batman? I'm, I'm confused. They're, they're in- also in the new Snyder Cut that's coming out soon. <laughs> he just threw everybody in there. When is that supposed to... Uh, it's out. this year. Uh, I know that. I don't I don't exactly know when. Um, but I felt like it was supposed to come out last year. And then it kept like... They kept being like, oh, you wait when that Snyder cut drops any minute it's, now. And then it's been like a year and a half. <laughs> you got to make well, sure it's cut perfectly. Yeah. What the hell just happened? <laughs> oh, God, I accidentally autoplayed a video. Oh, God, that's the worst. <laughs> I thought somehow, somehow you had transmitted music to my headphones. Whoa, the Whoa. world of tomorrow. And before that that comes across as i don't computer good um i thought that you had been playing audio on your end that was being picked up by the call that was yeah no i'm not that I, i'm not that uh tech savvy i mean I'm, I'm slightly tech savvy but i'm not that tech savvy also you know what we don't need to get into it we don't do you know what we do need to get into <laughs> hello and welcome to the never heard of it podcast i'm your host michael fight and i have a bounty of We'll say uh, one million dollars. One million dollars. Well, hello. So <laughs> today we're 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 continuing on with our uh, our month of uh, bad ass women, and with the emphasis on bad. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, the thing about this one is is coincidentally, this is yet another movie where the main character really isn't like where the the female like the the front of the poster the the title of the movie is not what what the movie is like she's not the main character of the movie it's really this other guy israelito but again i mean she's in it a lot more but presented from the the very first scene as though she's going to be uh like the character and then jumps away to another person and follows that person's story uh and is another rather inept and bumbling man uh, who? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, let me let me get this right out of the way because I'm, I'm going to say it. Like, he stumbles his way through the entire fucking movie, and then at the end gets to be the the hero and like gets the girl and all this. And it's, you know what? It's boring. This movie it was is. almost good, but it, it bored me. Yeah. So there's and the other thing about this movie about the fact that it's boring is that it's it's only like an hour long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like yeah, it's and- not, it's like barely a real movie. <laughs> So Ellen doesn't listen to this podcast, which good for her. There's no reason for her her to. Yeah. Um, But we do uh, occasionally, if if she doesn't watch the movie, so she'll occasionally ask me, so like, so how was it? Was it bad? Um, And I told her like this one before I watched it, I was like, you know, it, it could be like good, bad. 
Uh, sure. It also, it could go terribly wrong and, and just be bad. Um, but if it does, it'll be mercifully short because its runtime is an hour and 13 minutes. Yeah. And somehow it was a very long hour and 13 minutes. Uh, you know, I, I went into it knowing that it was only an hour 13. And I think at about 48 minutes uh, in, I checked the time and I was like, well, it has to be almost over because like, Jesus. And yeah. uh, it was not. There was still half an hour left. And I was like, oh, Christ. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean... So there, there was a few things that I liked about this movie. I thought the actual character of the machine gun woman was awesome. Yeah. Um, I thought she was great. And I want, I just want the movie to be about her mm -hmm. um, because she's great uh, for many reasons. And I think the whole, like the guy, the ineptitude of the guy and then eventually getting the girl kind of works out in the end in a better way um, because she I don't know. We'll we'll talk about the movie. Obviously, I mean, obviously, for those of you who are listening to this podcast, we're like 200 episodes in, uh, technically. Um, I think we're like 185 or something like that. But this is really like 160 or something. But uh, we spoil the fuck out of movies. So, yeah. Please, please be prepared for yeah, that. So we're, we're going to spoil it. But uh, even before we get into that, let's, uh, let's cover quick uh, content warnings. This is a, like, kind of late 20th century, like, grindhouse style exploitation film uh there is a lot of violence a lot of blood a lot of people getting shot up uh insinuations of people having uh oil uh dipsticks shoved in places they don't want uh i mean really metals. anywhere is is a place that i don't want an oil <laughs> yes <laughs> like nowhere in my body metal straws to the eye uh and a fairly significant amount of nudity um and yeah i mean it's also, it's, it's Spanish language. It's uh, set in Chile. So turn the subtitles on if you don't know Spanish. And uh, let's get into it. Yeah. Uh, so this movie came out in 2012. Um, and it's uh, entitled Bring Me the Head of the Machine Gun Woman. So, uh, so again, this is another one of those movies that starts off you thinking that the movie is going to be about the Machine Gun Woman. Now, uh, mm -hmm. that being said, the movie is about the Machine Gun Woman. But it doesn't star the machine gun woman. She she is merely an aspect of it. So this is kind of like, um, I don't know. I'm trying to think of another. There, there's been a few movies where it's like, hey, th this movie is about this person, but like you don't see them for a while. Um, but uh, uh, so so the the machine gun woman is played by uh, Fernanda Yehola. Uh, Yero Hola. I don't speak Spanish, so we're going to do my best. Um, she's been in a few things. She's been around. Um, she, uh, most specifically, she was in uh, Narcos. Uh, she was in Party of Five. Um, she's, uh, she was in a, a movie called Imprisoned. So she's, she's been in some things. Um, and, and you've seen her around. Um, uh, other than that, uh, you know, maybe if you watch Party of Five, I guess, or Narcos, uh, Mexico, you you've seen her. This um, is a 2020 Party of Five. Is this like a reboot or is this? A, yeah, there was a reboot. A um, remake. Yeah, there was a, a a remake, I guess, a reboot. I, I don't know what you want to call it, but there was a reboot of it um, right around the same time, maybe a few years, give or take, around the same time that they rebooted Beverly Hills 90210. So this party of five follows the five Acosta children uh, as they navigate daily life struggles to survive as a family unit after their parents are suddenly deported to Mexico. Well, that's a very 2020 storyline. It was a very 2020 storyline. I don't know. Is this though? Like, I'm curious if this is like, a, uh, like the American version or is this like maybe a, a um, this, like a, like a Spanish version? No, it was the English. Yes. It was still an American in, family. Yeah, and it was Montreal, so this was definitely uh, the remake one, which I didn't watch. Honestly, I didn't watch the original Party of Five either. Like, I knew of it because Jennifer Love Hewitt, but, like, I didn't watch it because I didn't care. I saw some of it, but yeah. not enough to remember anything about it. Yeah, I mean, I remember Jennifer Love Hewitt. That's about it. I don't um, remember her being in that. She was, like, the the, like, main girl, I think. You would say or one that. of them. I would say I, I'm not going to lie to you. I totally would say that. <laughs> I also almost just knocked over uh, sparkling water on my desk, and that would have been that would have been a bad time. Wait, uh, so I have a question about Lacey this, Chabert uh, was in this. Oh yeah, yeah Jennifer Lacey Chabert. Yeah, there she was. 
Yeah, because okay, Lacey right. Chabert and, and uh, Jennifer Love Hewitt, I used to always get confused. Um, even though Lacey Chabert is like much younger than her, but they're very different later, people, but they I, look I, alike. I mean, believably family though. Uh, three of the five are believably related, and actually the other two would be uh, as well. All five of them don't strike me as. Uh, yeah. Eh, eh. Whatever. No, this, this, party of five. this is not a party of five podcast. <laughs> Where's <laughs> Andrea? Because it's about to be. <laughs> <laughs> Andrea's going to pop out of nowhere and be like, buddy. <laughs> but what about Lost? Uh, for those of you that don't know, please go listen to uh, Second Edition 1. You'll understand that joke a lot better. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, uh, so, so the film follows, um, uh, this, this actually, uh, this character by the name of Santiago, who, um, is, you know, typical loser dude. He just really loves video games. He He's really big into Grand Theft Auto. Um, and, uh, he, uh, you know, he, he, you know, he's a loser. He lives with his mom, you know, he just kind of hangs out and does nothing, but he works at a nightclub, um, that, uh, um, is run by, a, a mob guy i don't know uh, let's yeah. say a they, cartel. They, they refer to him a few times as an argentinian uh mobster yeah a, Ch- a chilean gangster um, um yeah but yeah so uh i i do want to point out you mentioned that uh santiago is uh he's a gamer he plays lots of uh, grand theft auto uh and this is one of the few few things that i thought like this movie did like in a really interesting way and like was one of the the more I don't know if I would go so far as to say redeeming, but one of the more interesting qualities of the movie, uh, in that each act uh, after the characters are introdu- introduced, introduced, uh, mm-hmm. I literally almost said that. Uh, each act after the characters are introduced uh, is uh, staged as though it's a Grand Theft Auto mission. So they yeah, give the, with the, the whole mission, title screen. yeah, the the mission uh, and the title. Uh, and then at like, the end of the act, it'll say, like, mission passed or mission failed in, in Spanish. Um, and I thought that was kind of interesting because it, it takes his aspect of being, like, you know, he he says to his mom at one point, like, you know, I, I just want to be the, the best there is. People make a living at this. And, you know, I want to do that. And, of course, uh, as most mothers would do, probably, I don't know, I'm not a mother. Um, she's like, you can't, you need a, a real job and an education and tries to give him sound motherly advice. And he's like, ah, but video games and DJing, which I'm not shitting on, like, do what makes you happy. Uh, but this is setting up the character. Right. And uh, yeah, so Santiago, you know, he was like, ah, fine. So he heads off back to work. And, uh, you know, he was like, all right, here's what I'm going to do. Like, maybe I'm going to ask my boss for a raise. And he's like, ah, I'm going to go to the bathroom instead. So meanwhile, um, he he's in the bathroom. He's in one of the stalls and in walks his boss and, and two other people. And basically they're like talking about this woman. So now in the beginning of the movie, uh, the movie opens up with um, the machine gun woman. So there are uh, seemingly assassins or bounty hunters coming after her, uh, you know, and she's she walks into like a convenience store and just you know, starts, uh, starts blowing them away. Literally. Uh, she, you know, the really cool gun battle. She has her machine gun, you know, that's, it's cool. And then the coolest part is (laughs) we get the gun. I don't know what, uh, what what do you call, what do you call those things? The people that have like the drum and the thing and the harmonica. Yeah. The one man band things. Yeah. So he's, he comes he's got in. the drum strapped to his back with the cymbals and like he moves his arms and it hits the drums and like, yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. I don't know. I just think of Mary Poppins and like uh, Bert uh, from Mary Poppins, <laughs> like the chimney sweep. That's how we, you know, one of the times we see him is he's doing one of those one man band things. What was this guy's character name? It was fun. It was uh, uh, El Chinchinero. El Chinchinero. <laughs> yeah. So so he comes in, you know, after we see him playing in in the street and he uh, in his little his little drumsticks there's there's gun barrels at the end of him and he's you know starts firing off at her she kills him and then as she leaves and this is important we see that he had his son with him who was also doing the one the one little one man band thing chinchinerito chinchinerito is the son the, the, yeah yeah the son yeah, the kid. yeah um so a chinchinero is an urban street performer in chile usually a man or a young boy who plays a bass drum type percussion instrument with long drum sticks strapped to his back which also involves a rope with a noose tied around the performer's foot to play the cymbals which also form part of this improvised instrument 
Uh, said instrument has been invented and produced informally and can carry any rhythm or melody. Like, that's kind of neat. It is kind of cool. Very, yeah, very, I, uh, like culturally specific to the, to this, this country that the movie is set in. And I like that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's really cool. Um, and it was really cool. Uh, so the character gets shot up, you know, right off the bat, she, she kills him. Um, and does the weird thing where she, they, they do this thing. I've seen other people do this in movies too, where they like lick the, you know, she like Catwoman style licks from like his chin, like up to his nose. Oh, that's and to then, establish that she's sensual. Oh, right. Yes, of course. It's, you know, the like barely any clothing as she walks in, like with guns strapped everywhere, like doesn't doesn't set the vibe enough. That, like, that didn't do it for you. So we needed to add this. To, <laughs> right. Or two <laughs> other scenes that we're going to see in a little bit. I. Um, where was it going with? Oh, El Chinchinero. Uh, his instrument had guns in the like the drumsticks. So like he shot is- from that. That was Which such a like cool. grindhouse thing. I think yes. I feel like that was such a it was such a cool touch to it. It felt like machete. I also love that every time a new uh, character is introduced, uh, especially when it's members of the, the mafia or other like bounty hunters, because uh, we meet several uh, throughout the the movie. Uh, it always shows like a bounty price for them. Yeah, which again fits with the like the Grand Theft Auto theme. Yeah, and it was even fun. They did it with uh, um, with his friend, and didn't they do it with his mom too? And it shows zero zero dollars. I can't remember for his mom, but definitely for like his buddy that he like hangs out and DJs and games with. Uh, yeah. with zero dollars, and like uh, Santiago starts out at five hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, so so he he's in the bathroom. Santiago's in the bathroom. He's you know he's hanging out, um, doing his business. And in comes you know a couple of members of the cartel. They start talking about the machine gun woman, um, how you know she's been uh, you know kind of fucking shit up. And they were like, all right, we gotta you know we gotta do something about this woman. We gotta do something. And so they're like, all right, fine, like you know put a bounty on her head, uh, you know whatever it was, thirty million or something. I forgot. Um, what exactly it was really high yeah i don't remember exactly but it was a lot of money yeah it was like an absurd amount of money he's like all right we're gonna kill them and then they like hear the noise so they open the the uh, stall door they see santiago and they're like i know let's have this asshole go and and try to get her like you go get her or i kill you and and then he kills one of the other people i kind of got lost i think something happened but i i missed the part where he kills the other person with him so this actually is somewhat important to the the storyline because they're having this conversation about putting the hit out on uh, the machine gun woman because she was uh, his name was like Che Sausage, uh, yeah, it Che was, Sausage. I, I, I guess um, it was like his ex or something like that. And we actually see later on a flashback of her dancing in the club and him being shitty yeah. and abusive to her. So like, good on her for leaving. Um, and so they're like, you know, we'll get her, but like, you know, we, we've sent, uh, you know, a bunch of assassins after already. And she even killed El Chinchinero. Uh, and so like, it's going to be difficult. And he's like, you know, plaster the city with posters, like old West style, like wanted dead or alive, but prefer- preferably dead. Uh, and then of course, as you see, they, they open the stall door and see Santiago there. Uh, and they're basically like, well, you should uh, take, uh, take the DJ here home and, you know, let him rest. Let him rest real good in peace. And he's like, wait, 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 wait. I can help you find the machine gun woman. And the boss is like, really? You can help me find her. You like a DJ who was literally just shitting and shitting himself just now from fear <laughs> because we were talking about killing her. Uh, and, you know, my number one guy here hasn't been able to. And that's when he's like, all right, and shoves a, a metal straw in his uh, right hand man's one good eye because he already has a, an eye patch uh, and presumably kills him. And he's like, you have 24 hours, DJ. <laughs> and he's like, uh. and, uh, you know, uh, to his credit, he actually does a really good job. I mean, he finds her in only a few hours, um, which is pretty interesting. I thought it was I thought it was good. And this we get a, a few flashbacks and like uh, as well as kind of current scenes through the throughout the movie of the events in this like tango club, uh, and so we see uh, Che's behavior and see him um, being shitty to the dancers, and so uh, 
uh, Santiago has a, a flashback, a memory of DJing at the club and playing this one song and seeing the woman who would become the machine gun woman later on, uh, seeing her really get lost in the moment and dancing and Che like trying to, to uh, like grope up on her and her like continually shoving him away. And he's just like, you can see that Santiago is desirous of her. He must have her. Uh, but he also remembers another woman helping her uh, when uh, Che was abusive. And so he goes to find her first. That's it. That's his first mission. Yeah. So his first mission is to find this uh, woman by the name of Chatelaine Soto. Mm -hmm. um, so he, uh, he, you know, he tracks her down. She works at this other club. Um, and so he goes to her and he, he pretends to be her cousin um, to kind of go in and he's like, Hey, look, like, you know, I need to find the machine, you know, the machine gun woman. And like, you you know, how can you help me? And she's like, well, you're going to have to pay me. And he was like, well, I don't have any money. And so he's like, well, fine, I'll give you I'll give you this iPod <laughs> or Zoom, I guess it was. Total iPod nano knockoff uh, yeah. where like instead of uh, the the old click wheel, it's just like in directional pad type of buttons. He's like, he's got 30,000 songs on it. This is like a life's work of of downloads. <laughs> You know, because he's a DJ. Uh, and she's like, eh, I don't really want that. He's like, but like, what music do you like? Do you like reggae? She's like, no, I don't. <laughs> no. He's like, what do you like? And she lists off a bunch of stuff. He's like, it's all on there. And she's like, okay, fine. Just give it to me and leave. Yeah. <laughs> Which is fantastic. So he, he eventually heads off and she gives him this specific code that he has to say, like, you know, uh, I'm going to check your oil and I'm going to check it really deep or something. It's something it's like weird, you know, uh, thing that he has to say, which goes into play a couple of times. I mean, so, yeah, she sends him to a, a mechanic shop and it was like the, the passcode is I need my oil checked and I need you to go really deep. And he's like, you're messing with me, right? She's like, it sounds like it, doesn't it? But no, <laughs> but no, that's really that's really what it is. Which that's probably one of the best lines in the whole movie. Like, oh yeah, that sounds like it, right? <laughs> but no, <laughs> but no. So uh, off Santiago goes, and he he ends up getting to this mechanic shop, and the, you know the first person he runs into is you know just um, this uh, young man who obviously you know seems like he has some sort of uh, developmental uh, things, and you know he he says the line, and the guy's like, okay. And then he goes off and then he ends up going in to talk to the boss guy. And the boss is like, you know, are you messing with me? Like, who are you? And then finally he was like, hey, do the thing. And he was like, oh. And the best part, the best part of this, just before all the shit goes down, is when he was like, have you seen our website? And he goes to a <laughs> website. And it's like, it's, it's so you can get like bounty hunters. And it's like a character. It's like a character selector in a video game. He's like, oh, yeah, you could choose the machine gun woman. You could choose this guy. You could choose this guy. One of them was El Ch Chinera or whatever. The the and he, he goes through like some of like their, their strengths and weaknesses. Like you said, like a video game character select and like, oh, this one, like he's, you know, he's not terribly smart, but he's really good shot. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was very funny. He's, he's very proud of his website. I have to, they did a really good job. He hasn't kept it up to date, though, because, I mean, El Chinchinero was still on there, as was, I think, a couple others that uh, Machine Gun Woman had already killed. Yeah, there was like two or three that she definitely had had knocked off at that point. So Also, like, I feel like it's kind of bad for business if your bounty hunters are killing each other. Yeah, but that was another thing that, like... I didn't fully, I mean, obviously we, we learn later on in the movie is that she was killing them because she collected their heads and um, she brought their heads as she was killing them for bounties. So they probably had mm -hmm. bounties on them. Um, mm -hmm. So she was kind of double dealing. Maybe uh, I don't really know. I don't really know if that's bad for her. Be like, does that make her character bad or does it make, uh, I don't know. I mean, either way she was a, she was a killer. So I guess there's, yeah, that. I mean, we definitely learned that she just kind of does what she wants and not necessarily uh, following any kind of uh, rule set. Yeah. Which I think is fine. I think that's great. And I like that uh, it's consistent throughout the film. So, uh, so now that all this has happened, um, we do know that um, Chase Sausage's 
um, <laughs> the sausage. Uh, it, his people are following Santiago to kind of like check up on him and everything. And so he finally, you know, he finds this place. He goes in. He, you know, he makes his deal. And they're like, all right, listen, this is, you know, what you have to do. And just as he's about to do that, um, some some people come in and they start, you know, roughing up the mechanic place. And this is where we get the the dipstick thing, where the guy takes a dipstick and shoves it up the guy's butt, and then he's like, "Tell me where the machine gun woman is." Ra ra ra. Which I, I believe that bounty hunter might have been El Tronador. Yeah, and this is the one we're we're gonna see him later um, in the movie. But this is the one that you know he he's he's out looking for the machine gun woman as well. Obviously, probably the same idea. He learned about the bounty, so he's off to um, to find her, uh, basically. So at this point, um, you know Santiago knows what to do. He overhears the mechanic guy saying, "Just take my phone, text the time and place, and that's it. That's all you have to do." Um, you know, and then you'll meet up with her. And, you know, we see the moment where he, uh, Santiago sees a gun on the ground and he's like, uh, I'm going to get the gun. And, you know, it just kind of doesn't work out. And he eventually, uh, he, he jumps out. Oh, this isn't the guy that I'm yeah. thinking of. Yeah. Because yeah. he, he, he does in a moment of bravery, he grabs the gun and he blindly goes out and just starts firing. And he ends up killing the young kid that works at the mechanic place and shooting this guy. Um, yeah, so now he's he's killed this first person. You are thinking of uh, Panguinao. Yes, uh, was the the character who uh, we we see later on go after uh, Machine Gun Woman. But it, it seemingly everyone is after her. Everyone is after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she's so good. Apparently, also yeah. his name sounds like a really great Vietnamese dish. I I'm looking up now to see like if it means anything because i was thinking like is he like the penguin yeah but penguin no, now that would be awesome apparently not so it's just I, a name apparently it's just a uh, a surname interesting so uh so he texts the time and place you know he talks to the people he's like look man like we're going to we're going to do this we're going to get this going um and uh, so now he he's going to head off and he's going to meet up with the machine gun woman. So before we, we talk about that, um, let's uh, let's take a quick commercial break. Um, but before we do that, uh, yeah, I know we're, we're doing things before we're doing things before we do things. Um, we should mention one. Hey, thanks for subscribing. Um, it was really awesome. Hopefully it's the way you found us, um, by subscribing, uh, you'll get notified right away, subscribing or following whatever the language is of your podcast player of choice. Um, you know, thanks for doing that. We have brand new episodes every Sunday and a trailer episode every Thursday and the occasional bonus episode. Um, but subscribing is a really great way to get notified when brand new episodes drop. So you can listen to them right away. Um, other than that, you can follow us on social media at the Nahoit podcast on both Instagram and Twitter. Um, that would be super helpful. It's true. Yeah, it can happen. It's open and free for the public. Um, and it's a site to be held. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, other than that, Caleb, if they if there was some other way they wanted to learn more information about us and or our parent company, where could they go? Well, of course, you can always visit thenahoit.com uh, to take you directly to our little slice of the web where we have our monthly uh, schedule of, uh, of episodes upcoming. Uh, links to trailers to watch, uh, as well as uh, where you can find these movies streaming if they're available, uh, and our contact form, because, uh, spoiler, not a spoiler, we'd like to hear from you about uh, about how we're doing and about what uh, movies you want to see us talk about. Uh, and if you want to know more about Night Shift Radio as a whole, the media company of which we are a part, you can check out nightshiftradio.com and find out all the, the fine shows and other uh, treats that we have to offer there. Yeah, a uh, great place. Lots of great information. Um, so before we head off and listen to our sponsors, um, no, that's it. We're just going to go off and, and listen to sponsors, and then we'll be but right wait, back. But wait, there's more. <laughs> but wait, there's more. No, for really, there isn't. Okay, and we'll be back. You're listening to a Night Shift Radio production. Night Shift Radio is a modern media company bringing you shows that entertain, inform, and most importantly, provide an escape. Never Heard of It dives into the world of bad, obscure, and sometimes just weird movies. Follow along with the crew of Set Condition 1 as they experience the 2004 sci-fi hit Battlestar Galactica, one episode at a time. Each week on Left of the Dial, we explore a new record or revisit an old favorite. We'll bring in guests to talk about their own music and the state of the industry. The Superpod Herocast, 
guys with beers talking about movies with capes. They draw a random comic-inspired movie from Thor's helmet and offer thorough, insightful, and humorous commentary. And once a month, tune into the Storyteller series and get lost in the magic of a good old-fashioned radio drama. Learn more about these fine shows at nightshiftradio.com and subscribe on your favorite platform. Hello and welcome back. How I are you? That post the whole break. Yeah, you did good. Yeah, the whole the whole time you were just holding finger guns for those of you watching on YouTube. Which, by the way, we're on YouTube. Uh, we have our own channel. Never heard of it. Uh, definitely go and subscribe if you'd rather watch uh, us dance our way through this episode uh, instead of uh, just listening to our dulcet tones. <laughs> Imagine being able to see your favorite podcast. I don't know if you can with that one, but you can with us. <laughs> a thing to us um so let's let's carry on with bring me the head of the machine gun woman um so uh we haven't mentioned it yet but this movie is streaming um on you guessed it to be tv um and we are not sponsored by to be tv but we really fucking should be really at this point we send a lot of fucking traffic to their website we absolutely should be sponsored by them by this uh, point Fun fact, this movie was uh, the first recommendation on my uh, my, my algorithm uh, this morning when I opened up Tubi to watch. Hey. So it's it's been listening. Me, Michael, it's <laughs> figuring me out. It knows. <laughs> uh, but uh, also, this movie is available on IMDb TV, which we mentioned uh, last episode. IMDb TV, uh, you can watch either directly on the web through the imdb.com website or... Or if you have the Amazon Prime video streaming app, uh, it is a channel, a free channel on that as well. Um, and it's also available on Crackle. Um, so there's Crackle. another uh, website you can check. Crackle, which is owned by Sony. So you can uh, go in and check that out. Yeah. Every, Fun fact. And Tubi's owned by, by Fox. It's true. Everybody's, it's a conglomerate monopoly. Um, <laughs> oligarchy. I don't know. Words. Um so, so at this point, Santiago is now heading off to meet the machine gun woman, and we're gonna we're gonna get our big our big moment, I guess. Um, so the first thing he does though is he realizes um, he needs a gun. Mm -hmm. uh, so, like most video game things, he's like, "Oh, I'll just go to the gun store and buy one." Um, and so he heads to a gun store, and he was like, "Yeah, go ahead." First of all, he has a gun. From when he kills the, uh, the the bounty hunter and accidentally kills the, the young mechanic. But he wipes off the fingerprints and leaves it. Uh, so that's, you know, first mistake there. Yeah, mistake number uh, one. And then decides, like, oh, shit, I need a gun. And tries to ask the, uh, you know, Chase Sausages guys that are tailing him if he can borrow a gun from them. And they're like, no! Get the yeah, fuck right. out of here! <laughs> right. Go buy a gun! <laughs> Which is also great. They're like, get out of here. And then he ends up at the gun store. So he ends up at the gun store and he's like, hello, I'd like to buy a gun. And the guy was like, <laughs> what kind of gun? He was like, uh, I, I don't know. A, a easy to use one. He was like, what caliber? And he was like, uh, the good one. And he was like, have you ever owned a gun? He's like, no. He's like, well, he's like, whatever, whatever it needs. He's like, uh, no, but I need it. Uh, because I have, I have a sick horse and, uh, I need to, you know, she's not doing well, so I want to I want to put her out of her misery. And he was like, "Okay, do you have a gun permit?" And he was like, "No." And he's like, "Well, I can't sell you a gun permit to do that." And so he, he keeps asking questions of like, "Well, what can I buy that's not lethal?" And he's like, "A BB gun, a this gun, and a this gun." And he's like, "Well, which one is going to do the most damage?" And he was like, "The BB gun." He's like, but what did this horse do to you? <laughs> he was like, he's like, man, this horse must have really pissed you off. <laughs> and he I mean, eventually, he's, clearly, so he gets, he's not fooling anyone. No, right. I mean, also, he's wearing like a hat and his hood up and his sunglasses. Like, he looks shady as fuck. Like, we know he is up to no good. And so does this gun owner. And he's mm -hmm. just like, whatever, dude. So he ends up selling him the BB gun and off he goes. Uh, to meet with the machine gun woman. Um, so she shows up um, and, uh, you know, right off the bat, uh, you know, she she goes, she moves her hand to like take off her sunglasses and he, he freaks out and pulls the gun on her and aims it directly at her. And this is yet another moment where they're like, 
oh, is the fact that she wears literally no clothing not enough? Well, um, so she goes up and, you know, puts her mouth on the gun. And he was like, uh, and then she was like, you can put your toy gun down now. And he was like, okay. <laughs> Clearly <laughs> defeated uh, by this instance. So he's like, okay. And so, you know, he he explains the scenario. He was like, look, like this is what's happened. Like they've, you know, they've forced me to do this. Like, I don't want to do this. And meanwhile, uh, income rolling in the people that have been tailing him this entire time. And, you know, the machine gun woman gets into a gunfight with them. And the one guy is left over and she brings him over and she's like, Hey, you know, is this kid telling the truth? Is he being forced into this? And the guy was like, yeah. And he was like, Oh, she's like, okay, we'll go off and tell your, um, tell your boss chase sausage um, mm-hmm. that you know uh, nice try and off he goes she shoots him dead and uh, um, off off they go basically so she's like you know hey kid go home like go fuck off um, so off he goes so he goes home meanwhile he goes home and there is chase sausages men uh, who have uh, beat up his friend or no who who is part of his friend I, I think I missed that. Some of the people kind of looked alike to me because they were wearing, they were all wearing the same like metal t-shirt. And I was like, wait, who are you? Cause I often track yeah, people by their clothes. We only see uh, his friend like uh, one more time, like in kind of like the final scene. Mm. Um, but uh, he's, he's met at the house by like a, a groundskeeper or like building super or something like that. Who's like, Hey, uh, you know, some, some weird guys were, were asking about you and you know, they paid me, uh, you know, I, I didn't tell them where you were, but like they paid me and like, they paid me 2000 like maybe he's yeah. like, like, what are you going to do? And I was like, look, dude, I'm really in a hurry. Like you need to move out of the way. Right. He's like, oh, okay. And like slowly opens the gate. Uh, Cause I guess Santiago's key is kind of jank, which I can relate to uh, the lock on our, my key works fine, but the lock on our front door is, is a little jank sometimes. So like, he's like, mm. so if someone's going to open the door for me, I appreciate that. Uh, if someone's going to stand in my way and not open the door for me when I'm in a hurry, because you know, my family's in danger. Uh, thankfully that hasn't happened, but you know, right. I, I would also be kind of frustrated. <laughs> Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so when we bought this house, uh uh my mom like I'm talking like the minute we we were like closing, my mom was like you're going to change all the locks, right? And I'm like, yeah, I mean like eventually. She was like well, you have to do it right now. Like right now. Like what if the day you close, the people come back and they, you know, they they go rifling through all your stuff and I'm like, well, like I'm going to be in the house. I was like, it's September, it's quarantine, you know, and she was like, no, you need to change all of the locks right now. It's very, very important. And she like, like sent me links to like hardware store things for like doorknobs. Very smart advice. If you buy a brand new house, if you own a, pl- a place, change your locks if you're able to, if that's a thing that's part of your, uh, yeah. home. I'm going to assume if you buy it, you, you can do whatever you want, but uh, but change your locks. It's really important. You never know if like a weird family member has a key, doesn't know you moved for a reason, and then they just come and walk into your house or something yeah, very important i mean yeah d- definitely definitely do that that's 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 very good advice yeah no, it was very good advice it was just very funny to have my mom like every day texting me like of all the other things instead of like hey congratulations you bought a house it was like have you changed your locks yet i'm like mom i bought my first house ever cool oh my God. did you change your locks yet? i'm like yeah yeah mom i changed my locks <laughs> that was almost one of the first things we did um at my last place uh particularly because the previous owner was really shady <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> so, yeah I, you um, know it was really weird in my old apartment i had uh um i uh, like maybe i was there for like two years somebody just like walked into my apartment one day like juniper and i were just like sitting on the couch and some dude just like walked in and i was like uh like i thought it was about to be robbed or something and he was like this isn't my apartment. Like, no. <laughs> and he was like, Oh, and he like walked out and shut the door. And I'm like, what the fuck? And I called the maintenance <laughs> people and they changed the locks. But I was like, how did this dude's key work on my door? He, he, he lived in another building, like completely other building. He was just drunk and got wow. lost. Yeah. Super fucked up. Very scary. No, no good. No good. Yeah. No bueno. <laughs>
Um, yeah, and we, uh, when we bought the, the last place, like, you know, this one, we were here for the process. Like, we were hands on with everything, but the last place we bought from afar, like, we purchased a place in New York from California. And then Ellen moved back before me and, like, took care of, like, everything, getting everything settled while I was finishing up our uh, affairs and whatnot in California before moving. And so, like, it was immediately like, you need to get those locks changed, please. Yeah. <laughs> Do not like, want this shady ass dude wandering into the house while you're painting. Right. Hey, do you need a hand? What the? Get, get out of my house. <laughs> oh, no, you should be doing it in W's, not not straight up and downs. What are you doing? It paints faster. I learned from Goofy that all good folks paint with even strokes. Yeah. No, it's very important. <laughs> Was that from Goof Troop? Maybe. I, I think, you know I what? Think from Goof Troop. <laughs> uh, I think Goofy was probably one of the best animated car- like cartoon dads that I've ever watched. Like whether it be from a movie or something like that, like he always, he always had good intentions. He always took care. He always thought of his, his son first. Like, you know, he wasn't like, you know, you have some dads that are like, they're, they're fuck ups for like comedy, but like he wasn't a, like he didn't mess up for the sake of comedy. Like the things he messed up were like, just because he was trying too hard to do good by his son. And he didn't understand like the, the modern ways of the world. It wasn't like, Hey, I meant to do something nice and I blew up the house. It was like, Hey, I meant to get you tickets to your favorite band, but I didn't realize it was this and not this. Like he always, I don't know. Goofy was a good dad. I like Goofy. Yeah. Goofy was a good dad. Now, uh, that being said, if any of you remember the Twitter discourse about a week ago now, um, there was a guy uh, online who fucked this guy, and I'm not even going to say his name, um, but his nine-year-old was hungry, and he was like, made them struggle like learning how to use a can opener to open a can of beans for like six hours instead of just being like, oh, here's how you use a fucking can opener like a good parent would. Is that what the fuck that's from? That's where the fuck that's from. This dude is an absolute twat. If you if you have to look it up, do look it up. Also, keep in mind, uh, he is uh, just a terrible, terrible human. He's he's used uh, the derogatory F words and he used the N word and he's just a terrible person in general. Uh, but the fact that he made his nine year old kid struggle for six hours using a can opener instead of just being like, here's how you use a can opener. And then being so, like, now go make your own food. Like, who fucking does that? I saw comparisons to that. Uh, from that to um, places like Stack Overflow and stuff like that, where like like tech forums where people will go and ask for for help with something, and someone will be like, "Read the fucking manual." Like if you were like if you really knew what you were talking about, you wouldn't even need to ask, sort of shit. And, oh, fucking like, hate that that kind of mindset. So I just assumed that it was something like that, where like somebody had asked for help with something publicly, and this guy was like, "Well, you know, here's the tools. Figure it out." Like, yeah, I fucking hate that mentality. I mean, that's you know, it's one thing if you want to do that to an adult because you're a twat, but it's a nine year old kid, man. This is a little kid. This is your kid. That is your job is to teach them how to do things, not just throw a tool at them and hope for the best. And especially, maybe I would give my daughter the tool, like, and I've done this before. I'd be like, well, how do you think it works? And I would let her kind of try to work it out on her own. And if it looks like she's not getting there, then I'll show her because I'm her parent, and that's what we're supposed to do is to teach our kid. I'm not going to let her struggle for six fucking hours to open a can of beans first off feed your kid a good fucking meal instead of a can of beans what are you a 1930s hobo jesus christ i mean the excuse and i'm just finally catching up on this because apparently i'm not i don't exist on the internet anymore yeah but literally uh, it's just happened today but you guys are listening to this a week later the excuse was i was doing a jigsaw puzzle you can't walk away from the jigsaw puzzle to make your child a meal i know fucking unreal man unreal anyways back to bring me the head of the machine gun woman so uh santiago (laughs) comes home after this you know chase sausages people are there and uh they kidnap his mother and they're like all right you've got three hours to bring me the head of the machine gun woman or you know we kill your mother and he's like oh what the fuck so off he goes um and he he sees that she is going to meet up with these people she's following them off uh, or following them and so she's he sees that he she is meeting up with people she brings out the bag of heads of all the people she's killed um but he learns that it's a trap he knows that it's a trap that she's she's going to get ambushed so as he's heading there he's you know sneaking in he's got his gun and the whole spiel and he gets there 
And just as she's ha- uh, handing off the things, the the guy, the penguina, uh, penguinow, um, starts firing off shots, kills the other people, and wounds her, shoots her in the side. And mm-hmm. so, of course, you know he sneaks up on the penguino guy, puts the gun to his head. The guy turns around, and you know he's a, he's a trained killer, so of course he's very adept at hand to hand combat, and just you know knocks uh, Santiago on his ass. It's the fake Obviously. gun, by the way. He puts the yes. fake gun to his head. Right. This guy's right. That doesn't make good choices. No, not at all. Uh, but yeah, so of course he gets knocked on the side, and just as uh, uh, Panguino is about to, this is like the most messed up part of this movie, just as Panguino is about to shoot him, the machine gun woman ends up shooting him. He, uh, on like his leg or something, and he falls down and accidentally tips his shotgun up to his own head and fires it and blows his head off. He goes, ah! ah and his head just blows right off. So It was actually pretty amusing. This is where I talk about, like, there are scenes in this movie that make me extraordinarily uncomfortable because of, like, the direct and personal level of the the violence applied to it. Uh, And then there's that, which is so fucking cartoonish that I can't help but laugh. Oh, yeah. It was... (laughs) The way his head just blows apart. Nobody's getting the bounty for that head. Yeah, no, that's... (laughs) Yeah, there's no money money to be had. So... (laughs) You know, he he uh, picks her up, you know, he he wraps his shirt around her to stop the bleeding. He throws her into her Jeep, um, you know, and off they drive off. And eventually she's like, look, if you don't remove this bullet, um, I'm going to die. And he was like, uh, and so, of course, she's like, well, I have a first aid kit. Here's what you have to do. Now, there's so many things wrong with this. First off, one, removing the bullet. Yes, very key thing. But removing the bullet isn't going to heal you perfectly. In fact, removing the bullet is going to cause you to bleed more. Um, the mm-hmm. whole point of removing the bullet is to stop um, lead poisoning. Plus, the bullet's really hot. It's burning you. It's, it's you know, causing inflicted stress because it's pressing on things that shouldn't be pressed. The removing the bullet is is the precursor to sealing the wound, like surgery to help seal you up because you will bleed to death after mm-hmm. the bullet is removed. You immediately begin to bleed, you know, which is why, like, um, whenever people, like, get stabbed in movies, they're like, don't pull it out because we're going to start bleeding like it's the only thing holding you know, the, the wound in basically only pull it out when you're ready to, to do immediate medical attention. Now he just yanks the bullet out with a pair of tweezers after throwing some rubbing alcohol on it. And then she's like, ah, oh, that's wonderful. After she has this like orgasmic experience with it. And then she was like, so do you still want to check my oil? And at first I thought she was like kidding, but then no. she was not. And then they do it. And I was like, wait, what the fuck? What? <laughs> Mind you, not only does she still need immediate medical attention for this mm-hmm. wound, uh, he has removed the bullet, but not bothered to bandage the wound. So she's right. just sitting there bleeding out while they fuck in the front seat of her Suzuki Samurai. Right. And that's just fine with everybody involved. Everybody. Yeah. Everyone in the movie was like, yeah, I'm sure this is fine. This is this is how it works. I don't know. This, like, Again, this is very much where the movie starts to fall apart for me. Like... Up until now, they're, they're like, I kind of like I'm playing along, like, all right, like this bumbling idiot, he's got his GTA fantasy going on while the machine gun woman is doing the real work. Like, okay, I can get behind that. But then for like him to like make a joke about like checking her oil uh, earlier and, you know, to rebuff him, and then come back to this moment where like, He's got her tied up you know, for his own safety because she's a killer. Uh, right. And he is theoretically going to deliver her to uh, the person that wants her dead. Um, he's got In her tied exchange up for and, the safety of his mother, by the way. Yeah. So that's, you know, important. He's, he's got her tied up and uh, has removed a bullet, but she's she's bleeding out. She's in pain. And for like her to then be like, you know what we should do right now? We should fuck. We should totally right. do that. Right. Like, believability goes from uh, from a here to a here. Yeah. It's yeah. low to begin with, but like straight down. <laughs> it was it was a nosedive after that. So uh so you know, finally she was like, Look, here's what we can do. Like you can pretend to give me to uh Chase Sausage and then I can, you know, shoot him up and we can go off on our own ways. And he was like, Okay, cool. So he 
Yeah. And so, uh, but he was like, no, and he keeps her tied up. So they get to the club, um, and he opens the door and, uh, just as, you know, he opens the door, you know, the Shea sausage and one of the men's there with, with his mom and, you know, uh, the machine gun woman grabs his gun and aims it. And he's like, no, 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 that's my mom. And she was like, you didn't tell me they had your mom. And he was like, oh yeah. And I'm like, well, I don't, but he doesn't make good choices. No. And why does she care though? Like. She she's met this guy a total of what six minutes I think like since the beginning of the movie till now it's like maybe a few minutes of interaction does she even know his we, name we you know, uh, I actually don't think she does uh, no. we don't get really any like real backstory or character development on the machine gun woman but the implication is that she's kind of fallen into this uh, life of being a bounty hunter and has become like the best of it uh, but largely was driven there because of this this mafia guy who she hates and will eventually kill sort of thing. Right. Um, and so she's not about killing innocents for no reason. Uh, she specifically has, uh, as far as we've seen, has only killed uh, the other bounty hunters, the other kind of bad people uh, involved in this movie. Uh, so the implication being, had she known that his mother was there, she would have factored that into the plan. Uh, and, you know, with her being there, she can't just you do what she does and kill everyone in the room and like they walk away. Right. Anyways. So, uh, you know, off they go. Uh, he finally is like, all right, you know, here, take the machine gun woman. I'm going to take my mom. I'm going to go. He heads off, uh, home and, you know, or, you know, takes his mom home and then is like, okay, you know, this is done. But then he thinks about it. He's like, no, like, I got to go back. I've got to, I've got to save her. So off he goes back, guns a blazing, uh, so to speak. And, uh, he, he does in fact get to the point where he's about to rescue her. Um, you know, they have their big battle. Uh, you know, she, she ends up, uh, slamming, uh, Shea sausages face onto like a letter opener or something. Um, and it goes into his one eye. His metal straws. Oh yeah. One of his metal straws. It goes he into his eye. And then, and then Santiago has this speech where he was like, you're better than this. You don't know this. And I'm like, you fucking idiot. She is a literal contract killer. She is not better than this. In fact, this is exactly who she is. And you know this because you know her reputation. Like you knew her reputation before like the beginning of this movie. Like you knew the machine gun woman was like a, a stone cold killer. So like, yeah, Killing I don't know this why man is literally why she's here. Right. And you've literally only known her maybe 10 minutes. Like you've only had about 10 minutes of actual time together. Like I get, you know, um, uh, there, there's another movie and I can't remember the name of it, but it's like one of the Baldwin brothers and, and Cindy Crawford. And it's the same sort of idea as he's protecting Cindy Crawford. And there's like a moment where he's about to kill someone. And she's like, no, you're better than this. But we understand that because as the, they're together throughout the majority of the film and time progresses, and we see that, like, you know, she gets to know the real him and blah, 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 and whatever. Um, and, you know, so that there was that movie. And we see that because we see that they're together for a long time. Days, in fact. But, like, mm -hmm. you literally met this person 10 fucking minutes ago. Like, you don't know who she is. You don't even know this dude's name that you've already done. Uh, you've already boned. So, like, there's that as well. Um so, so there's the other half of that. So, you know, she, he's like, no. And she was like, oh, you know, I, I consider that I would just run away with you and your mom. She's like, but you have to understand. And then she takes her giant high heeled boot and stabs him in the other eye, stabs <laughs> Chase sausage in the other eye. She's like, you'd have to live with my temper. And then shoots him in the groin like five times. And I'm like, fuck yeah. Do yeah. That. <laughs> so I love the fact that she was just like, no. <laughs> Like, I'm literally yep. going to go keep killing people. Bye. Like, who are you? And, uh, uh, and off she goes. Santiago is still clinging to this idea, though, that, yeah. like, he's won her over, and they're, like, they're going to be a thing now. And as they leave, she gets targeted again by uh, Chinchinero's son, Chinchinerito, uh, who apparently also has a, a gun in his instrument, <laughs> which is dope. The kid just, like, stares her down as, like, she's got her, her gun pointed at him. And he's like, no, no, no. Santiago's like, don't like stops her and like lowers the gun and the kid just stares at them for a bit and then just walks away. Um, she's like, Man, fuck you. And like gets in her Suzuki and drives away and he steals yeah. a Pontiac Solstice. 
Yeah, and it's it's a very Django Boba Fett moment with the kid where he finally gets revenge on Mace Windu or something. So she drives off. Now, mind you, she's been shot in the side with no medical attention, and now she's been shot in the shoulder, mm-hmm. and she's mm-hmm. just driving off like everything's fine. Yeah. Um, so he steals a little car. He's going after her, and just as he does, uh, he mind you, he's covered in blood and has guns on him. Um, he ends up getting pulled over by the police, and it says game over, and that's the end of our movie. And I thought that was really <laughs> funny. <laughs> I miss him getting pulled over. I guess at that point, yeah. I didn't care anymore. <laughs> yeah, the very last thing. So as she drives away and he's driving up behind her, there's a police officer like comes out in the in the middle and like stops his car and pulls him over. And it says game over because he, you know, he's about to get arrested for possession of a gun and being covered in blood um, and, and the murder like, of all those people. Yeah, I mean, he is fucking strapped in the, with yeah. guns. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, good. Yeah. He got his end then. He, he did. He got exactly so, what he deserved. Bring me the head of the machine gun woman. Now, I do want to point out a little history of the title of this. Um, So there is another, a very famous movie from 1974 called Bring Me the Head of Alfredo Garcia, um, Mm -hmm. which uh, is, you know, basically very similar idea to a barroom pianist and a a prostitute girlfriend go on a trip to basically uh, into the Mexican underworld to collect the bounty on this dead gigolo. Um, Very similar vibe. So obviously this was, this was a play on or a parody of that film. Um, but the whole idea of bring me the head of blank actually uh, comes from Bible times. And uh, there's Salome. Salome was the daughter of Herod uh, and Herodias. Um, oh, yeah. And she was enlisted with bringing the head of, of uh, uh, John the Baptist. Um, and this is New Testament uh, stuff. So this is this is where kind of bring me the head of comes comes from that era. Did you catch the Easter egg in the beginning when Santiago and his buddy are, are talking about... Uh, Grand Theft Auto specifically, and yeah. uh, Santiago holds up a uh, like a PS4 game cartridge or whatever, uh, and it's very like stylized as yeah, Grand Theft Auto, but it says "Bring me the head of Rene Garcia." Yeah, yeah, I did see that. Yeah, it was very interesting. So that was a really fun another homage, I guess. To homage is probably a better uh, term than than say parody or play on. It was an homage yeah. to to that film, um, which is pretty cool. Which again, that whole nod to it being very like, like if GTA was a grindhouse movie, like that's clever. I can get behind that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, bring me the head of the machine gun woman. Should you watch this movie? Eh, eh. <laughs> I mean, if you one, if you uh, are looking for some sort of Latin exploitation film, which Latin exploitation is the name of the uh, production company that uh, did mm-hmm. this. Um, if you are uh, into one grind uh, grindhouse type films, um, it's not the best one I've seen. There are better ones. Um, uh, there's there's even better Spanish ones. Uh, New Nuns with Big Guns is an example uh, of a much better <laughs> film. Uh <laughs> It's actually pretty, that's a pretty good one. Um, but there's a few other like Spanish films that I think, uh, uh, Spanish speaking films or Hispanic films that I think are better. Um, but, uh, um, so if you, if this is like the, if this like very specific genre, you know, Latinx, uh, grind, uh, grindhouse type film, then yeah, go, go for this film. But if you're just looking for a grindhouse film, there's much better ones than this. I, I can't recommend it for that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's it. That's that. Uh, so again, this was streaming for free on Tubi TV. Uh, no sign up required. Same thing with IMDb TV. Uh, no sign up required on that. So what, whatever is your preference. If you don't want to give money to Fox, go to IMDb TV. But I will point out that's giving money to Amazon. So it's kind of like, you know, uh, it's, it's one way or another. You're giving money to the devil. Um, or you can watch it on Crackle and give it to Sony, um, which, you know, I mean, lesser of all the evils, I guess. I don't know. They make PlayStation, and that's cool. Um, so <laughs> we'll give them that. Um, I don't know. At least they're a Japanese-based company and not uh, an American, you know, uh, crazy one. Um, but either way, do that. Um, or, you know, uh, steal it. I don't care. Um, or just don't watch it. <laughs> you have options. You have so many options. It is a world of choice and you uh, are holding the joystick. So, um, uh, yeah, so, so that's, that's that for this one. So our next episode, oh crap. I don't even know if I remember what our next episode's called. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I apologize in advance. I have actually seen this movie. Um, 
Oh boy. Uh, so our next movie is called Minty the Assassin. Oh, um, this one is streaming on Tubi TV. Do you guys see this? There is a stink bug crawling towards my face on my. Oh no. <laughs> you gotta go. Oh, no. Sorry. Bye. <laughs> I <laughs> he was coming right to you. He's like, I got a thing to say to you. Fuck this movie. <laughs> um, so Minty the Assassin that microphone. <laughs> is the uh, is the next uh, film we're going to be talking about. Um, so again, thanks a lot for listening, everyone. Uh, hey Caleb, thanks for uh, um, thanks for being you. I appreciate you and uh, your your uh, insight onto films and movies. Thanks, I appreciate you too. Yeah, yeah. But anyways, uh, you know, guys, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see you this Thursday for a trailer and then Sunday for an episode. Yay.